Welcome back to the Digilent Physical Computing Kit for LabVIEW tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section, we'll learn how to read the state of one of the push buttons on the Chipkit WF32. Then we'll modify our code to count the number of times the user presses the button. In LabVIEW, I'll click Help and choose Find Examples. Then I'll click the Search tab and search for links. I'll double click the Digital Read One Channel VI to open it. In the Serial Port section, I'll click the drop down and choose COM4, which is my chip kit. The DI channel I'll set to 65 because that's connected to button 2 on the chip kit WF32. Then I'll click the Run button to run the VI. LabVIEW will establish a connection to the chip kit, and when it does, I can press button 2 and you'll see the state of the button indicated on the front panel. When I press it, the LED lights up. When I release it, it goes dark. Let's take a look at the code. I'll click the Stop button, and then press Control-E to bring up the block diagram. And I'll bring up context help so we can see which VIs we're using. As usual, we start by establishing a connection to the chip kit using the Links Initialize VI. Inside the while loop, we call the Digital Read One Channel VI. All we have to give it is a digital channel, which is a U8. It outputs a Boolean value to represent the state of that digital channel. Outside the loop, we close the connection to the chip kit and then report any errors to the user. Let's modify this code to count the number of times that we press the button. I'll add some space and move my digital read over. We need a numeric indicator to display the number of counts. So I'll switch to the front panel and right click to bring up the controls palette. Then I'll choose numeric and numeric indicator and I'll place it on the front panel. I'll change the name to value. I'll double click on that control to find it on the block diagram and I'll place it inside our while loop. We'll use shift registers to store the count value from one loop iteration to the next. So I'll right click on the edge of the while loop and choose add shift register. We'll need to initialize the value to zero. So I'll use a numeric constant by pressing control space to bring up quick drop and typing numeric and select numeric constant. I'll wire that into the shift register to initialize it to zero. Now, if the button's pressed, we want to increment that count. If it's not, we don't want to do anything to it. So we'll use a case structure to determine if we should increment the value or not. I'll right click to bring up the functions palette and choose structures and case structure. I'll click and drag to draw the case structure and I'll wire in the output of the digital read to the selector terminal. I'll pass my numeric value into the case structure and double click to create the tunnel. In the true case, that means the button's pressed. So we'll use an increment VI to increment the value. We'll wire that value out into our indicator so we can see the value. And I'll also connect it to the right shift register. That way we can save the value for the next loop iteration. I'll switch to the false sub diagram of the case structure. And in this case, we don't need to do anything to the value. So we'll just pass it through. Let's run our VI and see if that works. I'll switch back to the front panel and click the run button. And once LabVIEW establishes a connection to the chip kit, I'll press button two. And you'll notice as I hold button two, the count value increases very quickly. This is because it's incrementing while the button's held because the state is true. What we really wanted was to only increment once per press. In order to do that, we need to compare the current value of the button to the previous value. So let's update our code to do that. I'll click the stop button and switch back to the block diagram. We'll create another shift register to store the previous value of the button. So I'll right click on the edge of the while loop and choose add shift register. And I'll wire in the button value to the right shift register. And we should initialize our shift register with false. So I'll use quick drop by pressing control space and place a false constant to initialize that shift register. 
Now we need to update our case selector to only execute when the button is pressed, but wasn't pressed last loop iteration. So we can use an AND primitive, and we'll AND the current state of the button, with the inverse of the previous state. So I'll use a not primitive to invert the previous button state and wire it to my AND. Now, the true case will only execute when the button's pressed and it wasn't pressed in the previous loop iteration. Let's run our code and see how it works. Now, when I press the button and hold it, I only get one count. If I release and press again, I get another count. So that does it for our basic introduction to push buttons. But think about how you could use a push button to increment a counter and maybe display the value on four LEDs like we learned about in our last section. In the next section, we'll talk about using multiple push buttons. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.